Right, so today's agenda, we're going to do some introductions. We're going to talk about building a volunteer program, running that volunteer program, and envisioning what's next for the future of peer-to-peer -peer outreach. And Tilly School, Ashley Hall, welcome, welcome. Union College, 300 volunteers strong. Cho University of Oregon, is that how you do it? Oh, um, and we're going to get to Q&A. So I mentioned um, you guys are uh, sending in questions into the chat. You can also send questions to Q&A. We will get to as many as we possibly can today. But first, I want to go over and do some introduction. My esteemed colleagues here, um, uh, we're welcoming Deb. Vanacek, Director of the Annual Fund at Millbrook School. Laura Day, Director of Annual Giving at Williams College. Evan Pingree, who's sitting beside me, is the VP of Product at Evertrue. And then I'm your host for the day, Mike. I work in marketing here at Evertrue. And so, Deb, just starting with you, um, tell us a little about your, bit about yourself and how you ended up in this world of advancement. So, hi, everyone. I'm Deborah Vanacek, Director of the Annual Fund at Millbrook School. Uh, I got involved because I'm also the parent of four grads from Millbrook and sort of stumbled into the role. Um, love it here. It's a great place. Send your kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's Millbrook School. They, uh, they're about to open next week. And uh, yeah, great place to be. Laura, tell us a little bit about how you ended up in your role at Williams. Yeah, so Laura Day, uh, Director of the Annual Fund at, at Williams College, also a proud alum of Williams Class of 04. Um, and I actually became a fundraiser by being a volunteer first. So I became head agent for my class uh, in 2011. Uh, I'd gotten to a point working in nonprofits where I was like, wow, you know what, if I'm going to advance my career, I kind of need to figure out how to raise money. Who's going to let me do that and not pay me and give me some really great skills? And turns out, I think it's worked out pretty well for my career. Excellent. And uh, in your career, you know, as the director of annual giving, you got to work with um, our VP of product, Evan Pingree, who is a, a class agent. Yeah. Um, and a classmate of mine. Also a classmate. And a classmate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So yeah. you know Evan really well. <laughs> So yeah, I'm uh, also a volunteer, was, was in that world a, a long time before joining Evertrue. Um, I've, I've volunteered at my high school, my college, and, and my grad school. Um, I, before joining Evertrue, was working at a marketing technology company that helped big brands better understand their customers. And um, when I met with Brent and other folks here and saw the opportunity to marry what that technology was doing for, for huge companies with a, a cause that I believe deeply in, it, it was an easy choice. Awesome. And um, hi, I'm Mike. I'm your host today. Um, I do marketing here at Evertrue. I got my start in advancement at Phillips Exeter Academy, where I live in New Hampshire. Um, I spent six and a half years working with the annual fund, doing advancement communications and digital marketing and just absolutely fell in love with this world um, and made the shift to Evertrue, um, where it's our mission to build relationships in pursuit of a better world. And we, we say that um, on every session, every presentation, and it's true. We, we are here to work alongside the hundreds of attendees on this webinar, the hundreds of schools that we work with, as you um, raise money for these institutions that transform lives. We're, um, working alongside you to help you do that in easier and better ways every day. We do that by helping you implement great strategy, um, by forward thinking strategy, whether it's from the for-profit or nonprofit world, to empower your people with the right technology to really get the job done. And that's why we're here, that's why we're here today. That's why we've been around for, for more than eight years now. Um, helping make this world a better place with a combination of the right strategy, people, and technology. Today, just to kind of set up our conversation, we want to talk about how the peer-to-peer -peer movement is really growing worldwide with lots of investment, both on the higher ed side as well as the nonprofit side, um, whether it be through affinity uh, fundraising, class-based fundraising, crowdfunding. Peer-to-peer -peer movement is growing, and it's growing because it's powerful. Um, we did some research here. We did a survey within the last year here at Evertrue and talked to more than 220 institutions and found that institutions with fundraising volunteers, they're five times more likely to have a participation rate that outpaces the national average of more than 20% over those that don't have volunteers. So investing in volunteers is a fantastic way to really drive those participation numbers. And it works because people trust people. Think about how you shop on Amazon. 
How many of you read the reviews before you buy something? Think about um, the Instant Pot. I don't know if anyone else out there is a big fan of cooking or is an Instant Pot fan. I don't have one, but I spent all morning talking with my colleagues about their benefits. And so I know that when I'm on the train home today, I'm gonna to be ordering that from Amazon. Um, because of the social pressure um, to have a better kitchen, I'm going to go order the Instant Pot. And then we can apply that to fundraising as well. Um, social pressure is a motivator to give. Nostalgia is powerful and wh whether it's Evan and Laura talking as classmates about the importance of giving back to their alma mater. Um, volunteers really know their peers' interest and, and, and can, can make those direct, those personal asks that, that we as marketers and, and myself in my former role as somebody who's writing those annual fund emails and those print solicitations, um, I can't make that same personal ask or connection because they just don't necessarily know me um, as well as they would know a classmate. I used to write appeals like this. This is actually one I received on, on June 30th, a, a couple of years ago from um, an institution that, that, that I won't name and I don't think is not with us on the call today. And if you are, I'm sorry, but this, this is just an example of, I think, um, annual fund appeals that we've all received from our institutions and from our alma maters and confirming that I want to be on the college online honor roll of donors this year. I actually don't care about the honor roll of donors. Maybe that's just me personally. Um, they did get my name right. Um, they did ask me to renew my support. I did make a gift because I do know it's important to, to give back, but I didn't necessarily do it to secure my spot on this esteemed list. I did it because I wanted to give back to the programs that I had benefited from. Um, but honestly, I, I don't think I, I, I did um, as much as I probably could have or should have um, and, and in part it had to do with, with the ask. Um, I would have much rather have heard from my friend Julie who, who was talking about our writing advisor and, and, make, and telling me how uh, the college was, was honoring him and his work and, and investing in the program a little more. And if this, if this personal ask had come in, I think I could have converted at a much higher rate. Not that I'm anyone with capacity, um, but that I'm somebody who has, who has a passion for higher ed. And this kind of personal touch requires personal outreach. And that is very hard to do um, at scale, but we're gonna talk about some ways on, on how, how to do that here today. And really 